Picking up where we left off, we now need to figure out how to get access points joined to our WLC. There are three main methods that uh, we can do, and there's actually a couple more, but we don't need to get into them for a CCNA discussion. The first one I'll talk about is the manual method, and we do this by typing some commands on some access points. The issue here is, of course, that is fine for a lab, but if you have 100 access points or 1,000 access points in your company, you're not going to be logging in each one by hand. The next easiest option is the DNS method, and what you do is you create an A record for cisco capwap controller uh, the trick here is you want to make sure you're also passing in domain name through DHCP. So you want to make sure that option 15 is being sent to the access point. Otherwise, it's not going to resolve properly. The DHCP method is the most uh, involved of the three because what you do is you use DHCP option 43 to send a MAC address to the access point so it can discover the controller. How this works is that the beginning is always F1 followed by four times the number of your controllers. So if you have two controllers, it would be eight. And if you have one, it'd be four. And then you need to convert the IP address of the controller into hex. So let's try this out. We start out with F1. And then we only have one controller. So this is gonna be zero, four. So now we need to know what the rest of the MAC address is. So now we need to convert the IP address over to hexadecimal. So what I entered in as MAC IP address was 10, 20, 11, 41. Remember when you do this, each digit is two nibbles. So we have 10, so this is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0 for the first half, and then for 10, it's going to be 8, 0, and then we need 2 for 10, and 0. So what this is going to work out to is 0, A, for the first octet there. So for 20, we have 0, 0, 0, 1 for 16, and then we need four more, so that would be a zero here, a one, a zero, zero. So 16 and four is 20. So this is going to be one. And then this is going to be four. Now for 11, we can cheat because we know 10 is A, so therefore 11 must be B because it's just one more. And now we just need 41. So again, it's gonna be zero, zero. We could use a 32. 16 is too many, so zero. And then we need an eight, so that will be 40. And then a zero, a zero, and a one. So that is going to be a two, and that is going to be a nine. So 29. So if you have any problems with this there, I would recommend spending some more time on hex conversion. It is useful for things like IB version six and wireless. So now what we need to do is I'm going to write this down so I don't forget it. So F1, zero four, zero A, one four zero b two nine meraki is handling my dhp server for my lab so i just need to go down to my wireless subnet here and add an option and this is going to be a custom option option 43 the type is going to be hex and then i'm just going to take that mac address i just caught our wrote out here go copy and paste looks good to me so we're going to save it so now what I'm going to do is just go to my switch. And I'm going to reboot the switches by turning off the PoE. And then I'll turn it back on. And what we'll do is we'll just watch a console connection I have to one of my access points. So what we would expect to see is that the AP is going to boot up in the next minute or so. 
and then it should find that DHCP option and then register itself with the WLC. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and download the firmware if there's a mismatch and upgrade itself or downgrade itself to match what's on the controller because the WLC controls everything about the access point. So there can only be a single version there. So when you upgrade the WLC firmware, it's going to go ahead and upgrade all your access points for you as well. So what I'll do is I'm just going to pause this to save some time and then we'll have a look at it when it's done here. Okay, so that's more or less done. So if we scroll through, we can see as the AP boots, it's doing its checks and such. And then here is where it gets its IP address. And here is where you can see it's trying to resolve that DNS name. Cisco dash capweb dash controller. And then right underneath it, it says that, hey, I found option 43. The IP address is what I entered in hexadecimal. And then we can see that it is creating that capweb tunnel to 5246. So um, just, for uh, just for clarification, the cap up tunnel in this case is just for management there. It's not going to be used for actual user traffic. From there, it's going to see what version of code is running on the WLC. And then it's going to start the upgrade process and downloading the new firmware. So what I did so we can play with the manual option is I went ahead and removed our DHP option. And in fact, I just changed the value so that's something else. And we can use the CAPWAP commands to get what we want. So if we want an IP, we can just go ahead and add that along with the subnet mask. And this is going to set a static IP address on the access point. If we want the gateway, we do capweb ap ip default gateway and type in what's appropriate for your network. And then we tell it where the controller is by going capweb ap controller ip address. And then we type in the proper ap, which is 41. If we wanted to reset capweb uh, to restart the ap effectively, we type capweb ap restart. And that's going to force the process to start over. Now we have some APs. We can go ahead and log into our WLC GUI. We can see right up front we have two access points, which is what I expect. And we can see that it's starting to monitor for things like how many wireless users are around. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit advanced. And this is going to take us to where we can actually configure things. So from here, the first tab you should always look at is controller. And this is just your settings for the controller itself. Uh, the one that we haven't done is the DNS. So just go ahead and enter in a DNS server so it can resolve things and go apply. Beyond here, we don't have to do anything because our interfaces are already configured and we don't need to add any other interfaces such as a dynamic interface because we're not terminating any traffic here. Uh, you can make adjustments if you want to, like if you wanted to add an IP version six or so, you can free to do so. And if you wanted to add a route for the service port, you can go ahead and add that here under network routes. But like I said, it's not really worth knowing for the CCNA aside from that it exists and what it's used for. Anyway, if we click to the wireless tab, we can see our two access points. We can have, we see the first one is the 191 address because I set the, it statically with the CLI. And then this is 170 just because that's what DHP gave it. So we can name these by clicking on it. And we need to make a few adjustments. And we need to make a few adjustments here. So the first thing is we want to give it a meaningful name. So I like to call this test lab 
the AP model and then the number of it, so this would be 01. We can choose to give it a static IP address permanently, so this so we'll save that here. And we can go apply. And after we do that, oh, and then we can go to high availability and we need to give this a name so that it permanently knows how to reach the WLC. And now that's done, we can go apply. And we can go back in. And we can get started on the other one. So I'm just going to call this AP02. I happen to have that saved. And I forgot to do this on the other one, but we need to change the AP mode to Flex Connect for this system. And I'll set the static IP address to be 92. And the high availability, I'm just going to give it this name. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and enter in a DNS address and a domain name. Go ahead and click apply. And I should be able to make my change on the other one now. So I meant there this to be flex connect. By the way, if you forget to change this to Flex Connect, uh, basically it's just not going to work. It's never going to let you connect anything. And go apply. And this is both of these guys are going to reboot now. So what I'll do is I'll stop the video here, and in the next one we'll finish up with actually getting a wireless network created.